Welcome to the Seven Out of Seed group tonight. My name is Dan Mess. I'm president of the Seven Out of Seed. And Beth Jane is going to be introducing the two guests. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Betsy. I, I am the vice president beneath Dan. Thanks, thanks Dan. Welcome. Okay, our first guest speaker at the former state the state senate is a fan of Selma and she works and listens to people's views. She has been a teacher, okay, and she also stands for us. And between her family, she lives with her husband, she has one son and two, two grandkids. So I'd like to introduce really a good person. I am so excited about being here with y'all. Uh, I actually had something else to do tonight, and Leslie called me, and she said, Peggy, we've got this special event with self-advocates, and we want to talk about voting. And because of your experience as a state legislator, I served in the House of Representatives for 12 years, um, I was asked, to uh, come to kind of share why is it important for you to, to vote. This is gonna be an interactive time though. I am gonna ask you questions and I need you to help me. Don't leave me hanging here. You need to give me some feedback. So we're gonna be talking about voting. But I'm gonna start with a question of why not? Why do some people not vote? And I'm not talking about persons with disabilities. I'm talking about just the general public. Why do some people not vote? Because they don't believe in politics. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat when you say, so make sure it's heard. So some people just don't believe in politics and getting involved in politics. Okay, what else? Yes, sir. Some people just don't feel like it's of their concern to vote and they don't feel like they should have to vote for something when it comes naturally. Okay, so they, they, aren't, they don't even know if it really is affecting their life or if it is affecting their life, why should they vote? Okay. Because they don't think it really matters. Because they don't think it really matters. Is my one little vote gonna make a difference? We're gonna unpack some of that. <laughs> Other reasons some people don't vote. Yes. Because they're not sure on who's running or if they're honest or not? That's exactly. They may not know the candidates. So should I go vote if I don't know the candidates? All right. And the other reasons you can think of? They, they may not know how to vote. They may not know how to vote. And that's not just persons who have disabilities. There are concerns of people, am I going to do the right thing? What if I mess it up? So we'll unpack that too. I saw a hand over here. Yes, sir. Some people don't like to vote and some people do like to vote. Some they people want to vote for something they want, who they want to vote and they feel like it. If they're not, then what's the point? Okay, so some people like to vote, some people don't like to vote and they've yeah. got to have a real reason to go vote. Exactly. Um, and kind of, sometimes I've heard people, well, why should I go vote? They're all a bunch of bums anyway, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You ever heard that? Yeah. Yeah. Heard that. yeah. So let's talk, let's unpack some of those reasons. Um, and let me give you some answers to that, um, which may help you understand why it's important for you to go vote. But I would think that you understand already because you've got great folks that are talking with you and helping educate you and you're educating yourself. But let's talk about some of the things that you could help answer the questions of people who say to you, well, my one vote doesn't make a difference. There are multiple stories throughout the history of the United States that somebody won an election, or more importantly, somebody lost an election mm -hmm. by just one or two votes. I went into office um, because the person that was running for, running for re-election to be a state representative um, he lost by 16 votes in the primary. 
And then because it was an open election, I was selected to, to run against this person, the, the person that beat uh, the incumbent. He lost by 16 votes and he said, oh, I had so many people that came up to me and said, I thought for sure you were gonna win. I just didn't even go vote today. He said if all those people had gone to vote, he would have won his election. Don't ever discount the power of your vote. All right, so it's very important that you use that. Um, I don't know the candidates. Not, most people who go vote, they don't know all the candidates, but they've got one or two or three people that they really wanna vote for. If you're not comfortable going in and voting for everyone that's on the ballot, you don't have to. You can just vote for that. If you just only know one person that you wanna vote for, you can go in there and you can vote for that one person. That's okay to do that. Okay. Uh, anxiety. Does anybody have anxiety if they don't know what's going on? They kind of get anxious and get nervous? Mm -hmm. Me too, me too. <laughs> People get nervous about going to vote. Wonder if I do it wrong. Wonder if, if I mark it wrong. Wonder if I, I can't do it. People throughout society feel that way. Laws have been passed, as you know, that, that guarantee that you have access to be able to go into a polling place that your voice can be heard. Mm -hmm. And if you come to a polling place and you can't have access or you can't see the ballot or you have questions, you can ask. Don't be afraid to ask, this is your right. Betsy, I'll get to you in just a minute, okay? Thank you. Um, so don't be anxious, um, or it's okay to be anxious, just know you can ask questions. You can get help to be able to vote. They're all a bunch of bums. Bums. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, a lot of people in our country feel like that <clears throat> politicians aren't honest, that they aren't good people. I can tell you in the time that I served in the legislature, most everybody I worked with, the reason they were there was to serve the public, to make a difference in people's lives. Things happen sometimes that it's misinterpreted in, in the news. Um, but that's why if you read a story about somebody that is serving you, if you hear something, don't just assume that it's true. You have a voice. You can reach out to that elected person. You can ask them questions and say, I heard that you voted this way or I heard this happen. Can you explain to me what happened? Have you ever heard that there's two sides to a story? Because what's reported by the media may not be accurate because of what really happened. There are unintended consequences sometimes to legislation and the, the elected person chooses to vote a different way because they know that if they had voted the other way, there'd be some things that would not be helpful to society. So, um, and then, um, I think that's the ones that I had here. So let me ask you this, why should you vote? Why do people need to go vote? Why is that important? Yes, ma'am. It's important because you need to know about who the president, vice president, and uh, And other elected officials? Yeah. Yes. You're exactly right. It's important to know, and it's important that you have your voice heard by casting that vote for who you want to be president or vice president or your congressional member, all the way down to county surveyor, uh, somebody that's serving you in the city, all elected uh, officials. You need to have your voice heard. That's a good reason. Yes, sir. It's to give your opinion, to give your opinion how you feel about society or what should be happening or what's going to happen. That's exactly well said. He, he said it's important that your voice is heard, your opinion is heard about what you think should be done in your community, in your society. Did I repeat That's that correctly? Right. Good, all right. Yes, Betsy. I definitely agree with the roommate Patty. She has really good potentials between the vice president and whoever is gonna be speaking I know somebody I know just like you, but Peggy, mm -hmm. because Todd Young 
that when I voted, well, good, it's great cut, key is a friend of yours, and also it's mine, and Stone Belt. And, and as friend of Stone Belt. And Todd Young is a person I met through Leslie Green. Through, uh, through, uh, through Leslie Green and yes. Stone Belt. Exactly. And through this, I definitely agree with Billy, and it's up at, and it's up how we can continue with it, because the voice to be heard Use your heart, vote, make sure you got the right person. Right. And so it's stand up for your right. It's exactly. And th we're going to talk a little bit more about that too. But it's having your voice heard. Yes, in the back. Uh, Jason said that it was important to vote uh, so you have your, your voice heard. Again, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, having your voice heard. Do you think you have much of a voice? <laughs> okay, so let me be a little more clear about it. Do you feel like you have a voice that you can be heard, especially by elected officials? Yes, ma'am. Don't fight your housemates. <laughs> Don't fight, fight with your housemates? Yeah, and that's and sometimes you have to have your voice heard to make sure your rights are heard. But, it, but with elections, do you feel like your voice is heard or when laws are being passed? Yes, sir. I say it, I say it on the people. Always be happy and think of America. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. So you were talking earlier about that, um, about knowing or not whether you're making the right decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you made the wrong decision and you feel that the person who you elected didn't do what you wanted him to, you can change that vote the next time um, you vote. Is that, there is power yeah. at the ballot box, yeah. and that's one of the places that you can do that. So uh, Leslie wanted me to talk about having your voice heard before an election. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of forums that are held, uh, uh, places where uh, people are gathered together to hear candidates speak. Uh, you were very, very fortunate to have um, a group like Stonebelt, Arc of Indiana, uh, you are coming together as self-advocates so that you can come together as a group and have your heard, voice heard even before an election. There are issues that are important to you, such as making sure you have the ability to get a job, that you are respected enough and uh, employment is offered for persons with disabilities. And so you need to be bring those issues up. I'm, I'm kind of out of the loop since I'm not in the legislature anymore of other issues. Go to those forums, raise your hand, and say, where do you stand on and whatever that issue that might be important. And it doesn't have to be an issue specific to persons with disabilities. It could just be something that's important to you. So don't lose that opportunity to have your voice heard. But let's talk about after an election. So you've gone to a forum, you voted, and now the person's been elected. During legislative session, there are all kinds of forums that happen where people go and ask questions about what's happening in the legislature. There is great power in attending those and asking the question, hey, during the election, you said, <laughs> what are you doing about that for me? What are you doing about that for my community? Um, and, and ask them questions to see if they've been paying attention to what the issues are and what's important to you. Uh, you were asking earlier yes. if, if we all have a voice and it should be heard. Now some people might decide that they think that they might be a little scared to use their voice because it they might not know whether or not people are going to listen to it, mm -hmm. not turn the other head around just like some politicians have been, well people always say they do that. Right, and so so there's a fear so sometimes. You shouldn't be afraid to use it. Absolutely. Let me just tell you, folks that get elected, people who run for office, people who are elected are just <coughs> like you. They have fears, they have concerns, they have families, they have to pay bills, they have to do all the same things. So don't be afraid of somebody. You have the right to share what you think, what you feel, and ask the questions. I mentioned in, uh, that the Ark of Indiana, they're a fabulous group that represents you at the State House. But do you know who the most powerful person to speak for you is? 
It's like you. You need to be the one because you know why? Because you get to vote. Park of Indiana, uh, Kim up there, she doesn't, get to, she doesn't get to vote here in Bloomington or Monroe County. Who gets to vote here in Bloomington and Monroe County? I do. You do. And that's why uh, your uh, voice is the most important voice to be when you speak to persons who are running for office and people who are have won uh, elected office. Yes, sir. I went to Washington, D.C., and she was with me and a few chosen others. But the reason why I went to Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C. was because of the fact that we were in a South Advocates Conference and there's an answered question that could not have been answered by the council at the top, sitting at the main front. When I asked them, and this is almost the same question I would ask a state or a legislator, is if you were in our spot and you had a disability, what would you do if it was us who were on the other end? or who were the ones making your decision telling you, this is what we can do for you, this is what we can't do for you. Well, as soon as I asked that question, they couldn't answer. They were like, I don't know what to say. Because it was kind of like we were speaking up for people who had disability. And coming from a strong point, it was the point that where I was speaking for all of us when I said, you know, the people with disability deserve the same the same outcome as normal human society. Mm -hmm. And he said, and when I asked him, I said, what would you do if it was you and we were there and you were here? And he couldn't, he couldn't respond. He didn't have an answer. But I went to DC asking the same question and none of them could answer it. So it was like- Well, I encourage you to take that question to legislative forums, to take it to forums where candidates are running and ask them. Um, and that's, <coughs> if people listen, and that's what elected people need to do, they need to listen to those that they might be representing, especially if they're running and they've not been elected yet, and they need to be able to hear what's important to you to say, oh, I didn't know that was a problem, or oh, I didn't know I need to do something different. I use the example right now because it's fresh on my mind. Um, as self-advocates, you spoke up several years ago and said, we expect to be treated as persons, not disabled persons, mm -hmm. using person-first language. And because of self-advocates, because you spoke up law that used disabled persons instead of persons with disabilities, that language was all changed. And you hear people now are more cognizant that we need to say you are a person first you're not defined by your disability mm -hmm. um, where I work one of the things that we're working on is how do we talk about uh, persons who are dealing with addiction or is the correct term is substance use disorder and we are saying it's person first you're not talking about an addict or somebody who is uh, a, a, an addicted person they're a person who has a disorder. And that has come from your example. You've proved, proven that there's value in language. So don't underestimate your ability to be able to, to make a difference, not just for yourself, but for other people. Because we're following the example that you led about saying person first language with other groups too. So I, I want you to affirm you with that and let you know you've made a difference for other people. Yes. Now, you were talking about addicts and stuff. And, Our persons uh, with substance abuse. With substance abuse. <laughs> now, now, if you've, if, you've, uh, if you've read the papers lately, in fact, I think in the Indiana Daily Student, maybe the Herald Times or whatever, they uh, said that the city of Wilmington is thinking about enacting something to shut down those centers. And so that makes you kind of wonder, what are they thinking? Well, actually, my understanding is, um, and I can't speak for the city, uh, okay, but um, what they're really doing is saying, we are gonna put a, a, a moratorium, a ban on any new centers being opened up until we make sure we know what's best for the city, who, who's the best group to come in. And so uh, it's not saying that they've gotta close 
things down. But let's just go a little slower before we open any more of them. And you probably have heard about SNAP, right? You yes. Something about that now. They came out and said something to the effect. Well, I know you're not no longer empowered uh -huh. to do anything about, but they've come out and said that they're going to cut SNAP benefits to lots of people that need it now. Some might not need it, but there are a lot of other people around here that can't afford the same things that some others can. Mm -hmm. and well, I, I'm not going to speak about that. We can speak off camera mm -hmm. another time. I'd love to talk with you about that. Um, but, but those are kind of questions you should be taking to the forums. When you go to, to hear if candidates talk or after an election to go to the legislative forums and say, I need to understand where do you stand on making sure people have um, enough to eat or whatever the issue might be for you. So I appreciate you raising that. Well, I know, but if you were, if you, you had a kid. If you, I understand. You had a kid and you were, and you were as a parent or a guardian or some sort were to ask that question and you were to get that um, silence, silent little answer, then they were to just change the subject. Mm -hmm. It'd be like, come on. Sure. And I'm not trying to change the subject on you. No, I just obviously mean, not. But, but yeah, so I appreciate you bringing that up. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell that you all have thought about this and that you know that it's important. Um, as we're winding down, I want your questions. I've already had several, but questions. Okay, we're gonna get a question right here and I'll come right back to you, thank you. Questions, maybe things we haven't addressed or things that are important to you. Yes, ma'am. For the mayor? Yes. Okay, so um, elections for those major offices typically happen every four years. Um, and on the even numbered years, we, that's when we vote for the president and the vice president, and then we have congressional races every two years. The mayoral elections, the municipal elections, happen every four years, but they happen in the off year. So 2019 will be the next election for mayor. So people are already beginning to talk about who's going to run, you know, and who's going to run for the city council and who's going to run for different offices. So start keeping your ears and listening. And if you feel very important, I mean, feel very strongly about somebody that should run for mayor, you know them and you think they'd be great, encourage them to run and talk to them about it. Start asking questions that are going to be important to you, things within the city that affect um, your life. It's okay. Yes. Will they be now? I mean, the last few times we've been to the state house, they've had the big election room or the voting room. Or uh huh. Whatever. Right. The the house and the senate. Uh huh. Now the, now the question will remain: Will they? Um, will their attention? Because the last few times we've been there, um, there is one more that is a. Uh, she is a leader. She is one of the governed, or not governed, but I don't know. She is one of the major bosses, uh -huh. that, and the last time me and her were standing there, they were not. Their discussions were mainly on the football team. And the football okay, team. so uh, that's great. That was, one of the things that happens in the legislature is they like to honor people, and they have resolutions. So it's not really legislation, but um, so let's say here at Stone Belt, uh, because of your beautiful artwork that you do, uh, the state representative in this area says we want to honor the stone belt and the, and the, the artist mm -hmm. and so they w might bring you up and they have you stand in front and they read a resolution honoring so that's not legislation and that happens and but I can tell you when those resolutions are going on there are people talking <laughs> trying to talk about legislation and uh, so that that's always happening yes yeah, so do we have our question back there not okay he's still working on it um, Oh yes, back here. Oh, okay. A joint is not campaign a um, campaign on a wall, and you can't have guns because the street gang is bad people. I don't know why you're going to be good. You can get with get up or dismembered. Okay, I appreciate that. And so what I and it helped me if I didn't hear no correctly. Good, no smoking, no alcohol. That, that was everything was your way. Okay. Several different issues that are important to you. And that's the kind of thing, again, that you take to a forum and say, and, but you know what, instead of telling how you feel, hey, can you tell me how you stand on whatever that issue? 
and let them tell you because you know how you feel. It's important for you to know how they feel that will help you decide who you're going to vote for. So, do we get the question? Yeah, Mr. Eric, um, I don't understand why uh, Medicaid isn't for all states and instead of for Indiana and Kentucky and Michigan. Okay, and again, I'm, um, I'm going to stay away from some of those issues because that's not directly with this, but I want to tell you, Medicaid is everywhere, but what's happened is um, with the Affordable Care Act, there was a request for expansion, and Indiana, it did expand uh, Medicaid, but they've done it with the Healthy Indiana program, and other states have done, done it also. Virginia, Virginia just voted to expand their Medicaid, um, so, but Medicaid is handled differently in different states, um, and there are different ways that it's administered based on guidelines from Washington, D.C. Okay. Yes, so, I'm sorry. So you were talking about voting. Um, so I didn't understand the part. Okay. I, understand, I understood because you explained it very well and everything. The, the mayor, it's so the election, um, when you do the four years for the president, then the second, like the, the second set, like two years after that, then you do well, it'd be a, a, so it, it is confusing. Yeah. And, and every state yeah. does it differently. But for in Indiana, we have kind of the, the state elections oh. and then the county elections are on the even number of years. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and every four years off. So the off. election, yeah. So, so, so it's like six? So it was the last election for municipalities, mayors, was in 2015. Okay. And so. Two that will be that. Oh, actually four years. Four years. Four years. Okay. So it'll be 2019. 20. So this year, in 2018, we're going to be uh, having congressional elections, and we have <coughs> a state legislature ele elections, and uh, there are people who are be running for different offices locally in the county. Yeah. But next year in 2019 will be the city elections and the municipal elections. Okay. So there's usually an election every year yeah. except one yeah. <laughs> out of that four-year cycle. And is there one that's like six years? Well, senators. Senators run okay. um, every. The U.S. senators run every six years. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Yes. Peggy, could you just talk a little bit about what it's like for the representative and the senator when the self advocates come to the state house? Absolutely. Thank you. It's it's a joy to have you come and to share and to talk to us as self-advocates and not needing somebody else to be your voice. We actually, and I know that you are, I'm sorry, what? I was gonna say, me and my buddy Robert, we went up, we went up the stairs and we kind of enjoyed the saxophone music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you never know what's gonna be going on at the state house. But it's, it's very important to have your voice heard. <coughs> but I have to tell you, Leslie, kind of based on that, um, I was, I. I what do we do? I googled and I just wanted to kind of see, you know, persons with disabilities and voting and I wanted to see what kind of articles were out there. And there was an article about a, a person who was running and who really heard and said we've got to bring up issues that are important to persons with disabilities. Um, but I, I, as I continued reading the article, a person, uh, a young woman who has disabilities, she expressed some disappointment. She said, I'm so glad that this candidate raise some issues and kind of talk, but why didn't that candidate dig deep into some policies and talk to us about things that are really important to us? Um, yes, there's lots of inspiring stories that you know bring a tear to the eye about how brave and wonderful some persons with disabilities have been, but she said, I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to hear policy. I wanted to hear what this person was going to do to make a difference for my community of people and for me. So, kind of answering your question with that, Leslie. Um, it's nice to get the cards, love the cards, you know, and I always kept my Valentine's cards posted because I loved them. Because, especially from here in Stone Belt, they're always pretty and well done. But don't, don't uh, be distracted by just giving the cards. Use that time to say, I really want to talk to you about an issue that's important to me. Whatever that issue may be. And you've got the Ark of Indiana uh, who, are, who can brief you. 
people who are going up to talk to folks, the legislature, the legislators there, they're getting briefings. They're, whether they're a group of nurses or a group of teachers, they're getting briefings about what they should say to their legislatures, legislators, can you say it today? You can get those same briefings. When you see your legislator, this is what you need to talk to them about. House bill, whatever, that's gonna affect employment for persons with disability. You need to hammer that home, that you are gonna be watching how they vote, because you know why? I vote, and this is gonna be important to me. So I hope that you, as my state legislator, will vote for this legislation. So thank you, my time is out. I appreciate it. God bless y'all, thank you. We want to thank Peggy, but remember we have another speaker, so we're going to take just a couple of minutes now to move to that next speaker. So we'll be right back. Hello, I'm Madeline, by the way. I do a um, photo stage. Um, here's one of them. It's the most important. I'm real social, so good. Pre-Ed is a program that helps with pre-education uh, before getting work, like getting jobs and stuff. I love um, kind of like experiencing new things. It kind of like opened an opportunity for me to like explore what other passions that I have, not just like for one specific subject, but for many other ones. And I get to learn so much from other people. The pre ed program has meant to me so much. It showed me how other people are also affected in ways that I am also, and it has shown me what the real workforce and what the real world is like, and it's helped me through high school completely. I learned how to take feedback in a positive way, not a negative way, because I'm not a person who takes criticism or feedback well. It just it feels like I'm being attacked on those things, so I learned how to take it from not being negative to make it a positive, being like, oh, this can help me in life, this can make my job better and not worse. It was very helpful. She taught me how to apply for college, for scholarships, for anything that I needed to do for my adult life. Priets, I think Priets is an awesome way to help people like, with uh, disabilities like me. I'm getting a job in the YMCA. Wonderful. Through Priets, help me. Priets, Madeline, help me. Self-advocacy, advocating for myself. That is one thing that I've always struggled with and now I feel very confident with it. Because if you can't advocate for yourself, you can't go anywhere. You have to be able to speak for yourself. Um, it's a good program, you're gonna learn new things, meet different people. It might be harder sometimes, you gotta get through it, you know. You all, you're gonna love it though. I think it's a good program. I'm glad I'm in it though. I'm I'm strong, independent, self-right. I think I'm nice. I love to sketch. I love to draw. I write. I write stories. I'm a video gamer, and I do a lot for my friends. Michael. <laughs> my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Mm, I tell him. Getting out and people watching. I like doing that. I would say it would have to be Disneyland just to see the Transformers studios. Live mm, by myself. I would like to get outside painting job on these days. I would like to travel, go somewhere. Yeah. Being alive. Hang out with my family. I tell you, I tell you, by myself. Oh boy, I'm the only man for that. Oh good.
but we want to take this in for Carla to see. Good morning, Carrie. Would you like to take a look? Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it look great? Our second speaker used to be a deputy clerk in Monroe County, but she is now an election supervisor in her job. She makes sure that elections happen in the right way and is here tonight to explain that to us. She will, she will also help us to register to vote, and if we have, have it already, please welcome or please give a warm welcome to Karen Wheeler. I'm very happy to be here, and I have one question to start off with, is, and that is, how many of you have ever voted in Indiana? Whoa, yeah. look at that. And hopefully the rest of you are wanting to vote because we can make that happen tonight, that you are registered to vote. But before we get there, I wanted to tell you a few things about voting. And there's two places that you can basically vote at, or it's really timing, and one is early voting, and that's probably one of my favorite things, and the other is on election day. And there's two elections this year, one we just had in May, and then we're, we're coming up to November, and that'll be November 6th, and that will be our general election. So if you could, if you haven't voted in the primary, you could vote in the general election if you get registered. Early voting starts about 28 days before the election. And it, the, the thing that I really like about it is that you can come anytime in those 28 days. Uh, we're open pretty much Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And then the last two Saturdays of that month, we're open also probably from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock. The election board sets our times, but that's what they have been, so that's what I believe they will be, but they could be changed. And so to vote, um, it's important to know that there are certain requirements. If you, were, uh, if you went to a vote on election day, you would go to your polling site. Everybody has a polling site. We have 34 of them around the county. But on election or on early voting, you all come to my place. You all come to my office. Everyone in Monroe County can come there and vote no matter where you live. If you're in Harrodsburg, Steinsville, Bloomington, Ellisville, you can all come to my office and vote. And if you need to know where that's at, I can let you know. And if you guys ever just loaded up a bus, you could come down and, and all vote together if you would want. But all the places that you would vote at are HAVA compliant, and that means that there's a, a paid parking area, that there's an ability to get into the building easily with a wheelchair, the doors are wide enough, and there's access in the building that um, a, a wheelchair can be accommodated. But probably one of the best things that I think that we have is what's called a DRE uh, voting system. 
and that is a direct results electronic voting system. Probably more information than you need to know. But what it does is some pretty amazing things. On this <coughs> machine, it has Braille, so if you needed to read Braille, it's on there. If you had a um, vision problem, we have a, it's called, it's a audio card with headphones that it will read the ballot to you. It also has, it's a sip and puff. You may be familiar with that. Uh, it's another ability, another feature that uh, with people with disabilities could use this machine. But anybody can use this machine. It's for anyone. Most people, I would say, vote by paper. This is by machine, but most people in Monroe County vote on paper. And you have a ballot in front of you. You maybe even have two of them. You didn't get one? We'll make sure you get one. Or you've got some. You'll get one or two. You probably got a Democrat and a Republican one, and it has all the names that were on there that you could have picked in the primary or in the May election. And people just go into a voting booth and they mark them. And if you want to use any of these tonight, you had a pen or a pencil and you mark them, I actually have a ballot box that you can actually drop your ballot in tonight and you can vote and see how it feels for the actual uh, election. But let's just say that you came to my place, to my office, and you're gonna vote early. You would walk into the door and someone's going to say, do you have your ID? And your ID would, could be an Indiana driver's license or an Indiana ID, state ID. Do any of you have either one of those? Several of you do that. Some people have passports, some have military, and we also take IDs from the state schools, like, have you heard of IU? I bet you have, haven't you? Yeah, so if somebody has an ID from IU, they can vote with that. It just tells who you are, and it gives us an ability to say, yes, you have that qualification to vote. So if you come into the line and you had your ID, they'd also tell you, silence your cell phones. We get that all the time, don't we? Yes. We prefer you <laughs> not to bring, you, you can't bring a big backpack or a big bag in, and we don't want open drinks in there either. And we can imagine why if things get spilled and we get machinery or electronics, I should say, that get wet, that would not be a very good thing. And we always want to make it pleasant for you, but we want to make it pleasant for the next person also. So we do have a few rules, but they're very easy to go by. So you come in and we have a tablet something brand new, we just got them this year, we're real excited about them. They'll look up your name. Of course, you have to be registered, but I'm assume at this point, I'm gonna assume that you are registered so I can tell you how the, the voting really works. And um, with that, we look up your name, we use your ID, find your birth date, and then we'll ask you, is this you? Is this your address? And if you say yes, then we're going to print out an application for you and it looks exactly like this. This is your application. And all you're going to do is sign your name on the tablet, and then you get a printout. They put a label on here, and then this um, you're going to take to another place. Th there's two ways of doing it. If you use the DRE machine that I told you, you don't go through this. You'll, you'll get the application, but then that's when it stops. You go to the machine. If you want to vote on paper, like what you have, then you'll take that, you walk over to the next place, and we will print you your ballot, exactly where your precinct is, exactly, if you, and in the primary, which is the May election, you're going to choose if you wanna vote Democrat or Republican, and you have to choose one of those two. Some people say, but I'm independent, I don't wanna pick. Well, if you wanna vote in the primary, that's how the state of Indiana says you must pick you have to choose one, it's called a closed primary. So you pick the Democrat or the Republican, you walk over there and they print that out, and it's actually probably still warm, it's a piece of paper just like that, but it's white, and then you will take it into a voting booth. In that voting booth, there is an ability for a, a, a wheelchair if you want, or you can stand and vote there in your privacy, and you will take that pen and mark it however you want. And Peggy mentioned before too, you can vote for as many as are on that list or as few. 
but you just need to vote for at least one. But that's, actually that's not even true either. You could actually vote for none if you wanted <laughs> on early voting. Now, election day would be a little different, but because when you're done, you're going to fold that up in half and put it in this, this is an envelope, and you're just gonna stick it in there. Now, with, uh, you might say, I don't know if I can do all of that. I don't know, maybe you have difficulty reading, or maybe you just want somebody there to kind of help you. You can do that. You can bring a family member or a friend, and then they would sign a piece of paper that says they're going to help you, but they're not going to tell you how to vote because it's very important that you make the decision of how to vote. You don't want to vote how somebody else is telling you. And so that friend or family can help you, but it can't be a boss. Does anybody work and have a boss? Does anybody have a boss? Yeah. I, yeah, I have a boss. I have a boss. You have a boss? I have a boss. Yeah. yeah. Seems like we all have a boss someplace, right? Yeah. Now, your boss cannot help you because they think, hmm, they might have more influence. They might say, you need to vote for this one. They might even just point to that, and they're not supposed to do that. So a boss can't help you. Now, what if, what if you say, I need some help, but I don't, my friend couldn't come with me, and my family member isn't here. We can help you with that also. We can take two people, it would be a Democrat and a Republican, and that's what we call as a bipartisan team, and we can help you. We can read the ballot to you, we can even mark it. For some people, have it's a hard time to mark it. Whatever you need help with, if you just, if you just need somebody to be there, we can do that, yes. If you don't know either one of the candidates, can you vote for both parties? Um, in the I mean, I didn't even vote this year because I didn't know who was running. In the general election, which is in the fall, um, there is such a thing as called straight ticket voting, and that means, so in the primary, you get the Democrat or you get the Republican, but in the fall, all the winners of the Democrats and all the winners... No, either one of them. I didn't know either one of them. You don't have to vote then. If you don't know them, you don't have to vote. And that's a good choice not to vote if you don't know. But in the fall, we have the winners of the Democrats and the winners of the Republicans, and they all come together on one ballot. Then you can say, I only want to vote for the Democrats, and you can mark a box that will vote for all the Democrats. Or I want to vote for all the Republicans, and then you can vote. That's a straight party ticket. You can do that. Some people do, some people, no, no, I don't want to vote. I only want to vote for certain Democrats or certain Republicans, and you can do however you want. It's a really um, vast way of you can pick and choose. And again, you can do as many or as few as that you would like. So, I have a question. Yes. Is there any type of jealousy between the two of the de Democrats and Republicans when they know that one of them is getting the most votes, or is that just, is that not, like, or do they, or do they come together to compromise, or do they get a little bit jealous of each other? I mean, it makes me wonder if you're using, if one side gets more votes than the other, and, I mean, it's sort of like a brother and sister fighting, like, <laughs> mom says, well, this is, you know, this is his piece of candy, and you need to be cool with that. Or the, or the daughter goes, or the mom says to the daughter, this is her piece of candy that you need to, and it makes me kind of wonder if they, there's a jealousy, just a little bit of a jealousy while they're. I'm sure in certain areas there's might, maybe even more than a little. <laughs> I'll have to tell you my favorite story though in regards to that this last election and it was actually for the delegates and it was so happened to be the Democrats so all the Democrats the Republicans do the same thing they all have a concert convention and then they get to pick they get on the ballot you'll see on there that on the Democrat there's they're different ones for different districts, so they're not all going to be the same. But those delegates, um, 
get to be picked, and then they, if they win a certain amount of votes, then they get to go to the conference to, to represent the Democrat Party or the Republican Party. Well, it just so happened to be the Democrat Party that there was a husband and wife on there, oh. and he came into my office just last week, and he said, you know, my wife usually gets more votes than I do. do. He goes, but this time, she got three times as many, and he wasn't happy about that. It's like, gosh, they should have, she usually wins a little bit more than me. Wow. So he actually lost in the fact that he can't, he didn't get enough votes to go to the conference. Oh. But he's an important enough person in the Democrat Party that they will choose him to go. It's like, right. you're going anyway. But it was more of that the wife won over him. Ooh. And they're up in their wow. age, they're not wow. young. They're in their 70s or maybe even 80s. So I thought it was wow. kind of funny that he was a little upset that he lost to his wife, but he was okay with it too. Right. So sometimes there is jealousy. All right, I just thought it. Sure. All right, when you're talking about your ID too, it's very important it has to have a picture of you on there. It has to have your name on there, but it doesn't have to have your exact name. Is there any Roberts in here? Anybody with the name Robert? Me. Robert. Two. Do you go, go by another name ever? No, I just go by one. Robert. Yeah. Okay. My, my name is Robert Eugene. Robert Eugene. Okay, have you ever been called Rob or Bob? Actually, no. 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 They, they, uh, some when I worked at the union building, I used to, somebody named Nathan calls me Bobby, and, and then Holly calls me Robert. I said, I shot him my ID, and I said, that's my real name. My, my name, real is, name Robert. is Bobby. <laughs> and I was like, he is a, is a so why, how come Holly call you Bobby? It doesn't matter. My name is Robert, Robert. not Bobby. Uh, I do know some Roberts that get called Bob, or Bobby, or Rob. And so your ID doesn't have to be exactly the same. It could say Robert, and you go by Bob, or the other way around. Because I told Nathan, I showed him my ID, I said, you see this? This is my real name. My real name is Bobby. That's my real name, Robert. That's what I told him. Yeah, my name is Karen, and I go by Karen. <laughs> it's been ages for me, but when I was in trouble, I was oh. Robert Lee. Uh, <laughs> yeah. By your parents? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. We kind of remember those. If we hear our full name from our parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know that trouble. My my mom told me that was my dad trying all. I was married at Eric for prom. Ah. For school, high school, senior prom. Okay. Well, we don't want to get in trouble if we don't have to. Yeah, me him to a little bit many. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I just, uh, um, I'm like uh, from, 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 from a different county. Uh, I'm like from uh, Lawrence County. Lawrence County. And, 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 um, and, and, and just on the odds right now, I think Peggy was giving you some good information there too, didn't she? Saying that you need to go talk to those people and ask questions in those forums. I think that is always good to have your voice being heard. And we know that one of the best ways, some of us can do that and go, but I think that all of us can vote. Yes. What are the rules about someone helping someone in the voting booth if they need help with reading or comprehension of the ballot? Okay, if it's a family member or a friend, they just need to sign a form that we have, and then they are allowed to help, but they can only help. They can't tell them, anyone, how to vote. And that can be a problem. Sometimes I've seen mothers come in with, well, it goes both ways. It's an elderly person, 
she might be in her 80, 85, 90, and maybe she has a hearing problem, and the daughter is wanting to say, Mom, here, mark this one. You can't do that. You really can't do that. So, um, But what about a, a paid assistant, a staff person? Can they also help with that? As long as they're not their boss, and if they're a, a, a helper, a caregiver, mm -hmm. they, and they sign the papers, yes, they can help. Okay. And again, we can help also if that caregiver br brings someone in and they don't want to help for whatever reason. We always have staff that will help um, an individual vote. Mm -hmm. We think it's very important. Yes? Karen, you talked about the fact that the, the primary is the, is the vote that decides the fall general election ballot. Yes. So what happens if you didn't get to vote in the primary? Can you still vote in the fall? Good question. And yes, you can. You don't have to vote in the primary to vote in the general. And some people choose not to vote in the primary particularly because they don't want to declare if they're a Democrat or Republican, which is interesting, because that goes on your record. We'll know which ballot you picked. We don't know what you voted, but we know which ballot you picked. Am I correct in thinking that the primary is just for, like, like I know that there were Democrats running against Democrats for the president, is that right, that within those parties, they select the person from that party to run against the, the Republican, Republican yes. or? So the Democrats get yeah. all their people, yeah. and they're always vote yeah. on the primary, you'll mm -hmm. see Democrat, 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 like on your sheet, mm -hmm. and they're trying to pick out the winner of yeah. the Democrats. Yeah. And then the Republicans are doing the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in the general, we take the winner of the Democrat, and the winner of the Republican, and then they yeah. see who wins. Yeah. It's very interesting. It's just fascinating to me. I think it's very good. I'm glad you're getting a hold of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other particular? Uh, one thing I do want to say if you haven't registered to vote, uh, I do have registration forms, and I can leave them here for you. Just mm. anytime you want to fill them out, I can show Leslie how to fill them out. And then the only thing you need is. Um, if you have an Indiana driver's license or the Indiana ID, and I know probably maybe half of you have that. I have an ID. Do you? Um, the Indiana State ID? ID? I do. And if you I don't have, have that, then there's another mm -hmm. way of using that. Mm -hmm. And I bet every one of you have a social security number, right? Yep. Yep. I do. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we just want the last four digits of that. But if you have the license or the ID, we need that first. Right. But then after that, so every one of you could potentially register to vote if you I want to. I do, I do have a question. Though. Sure. So if we vote, do, okay, the obsolete, the obsolete question of voting would be, will we get done what we're looking for? Meaning that if we, if we do, to go, do go to vote, let's say a few of us want to go to vote and there's something we would really want done in particular. Like, for very example, um, the primary example of living with Section 8, let's just say for an example, this is what we're asking for. The question is, if we vote, will we be able to get that done the way that we're looking to get it done, meaning that will there be somebody there to be like, all right, we can help you and we can, you throw us ideas, we'll get, we'll do what we can to get it done. I mean, it's sort of like the Stone Stone Temple Bible. It's the conversation ends, but <laughs> it's ignoring, it's ignoring the, like, I'm hoping that they won't ignore the point of what we have, what we're trying to get done. So there's a few of us in this room that are, that are worried about if we do get to vote, and we do go up to them for like Section 8 and asking them the question of, you know, if we vote for you, will you do what you say? Because a lot of the president, not that I would throw this out there on a regular random conversation on purpose, but a lot of the presidents make a lot of the questions of, yes, we'll do it. We'll, they make a lot of promises that they can't keep. Even the, the legislators question is, and will always remain to be, if we 
we come to you voting for you and asking you to do this for us, will you do that or will you change your conversation and be like, all right, I did try or, or all right, I, I will try to make it the best that I can. But knowing that people with disability want to hear a yes or a no, you know, that's the only question I have. So if we're voting for our legislators and asking, asking them that question, will they accomplish what we're trying to get done? It's a good question, and everyone that votes has that question. And with that, I am not guaranteed that I, if I, when I vote for my candidate that I want, and they told me they're gonna do it, and I vote for them, sometimes they follow through and sometimes they don't. So you make your best choice, but then I would follow up with them afterwards and talk to them again. It's not just a done deal, because they wanna get reelected. Yeah. And so if you can continually work with them, um, and there's always uh, reasons behind the scenes that we don't understand either of, maybe they had to make a choice between this and this, and they don't always get exactly what they want. They may want it just as much as you, but sometimes <coughs> with politics it doesn't work. Right. But that doesn't want, I don't want that to make you not vote, because right. we all want what we want, we I don't always. Question. Yeah. We're actually out of time. <laughs> we're out of time. I'm so sorry. You guys were a great group. No, cool. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you. So I'm sure Karen can stay around and answer questions. She also has a voting machine thingy, Bobby, here that you can try out if you'd like. <laughs>